Hi everyone, this is what Becky did last night and I've been asked if I would do some voiceovers for my art journaling pages. If you'd prefer to watch this video without any voiceovers, you can find a link in the description below. So today I'm doing an art journal page using the stencils from Paper Babe. And here is the side profile template. I'll keep a link to um, all of the products I use in my blog entry. And these stencils are really, really easy to use. You literally just uh, draw around them in number order and then match up the pieces and then you have the perfect uh, the perfect layout ready to create your um, portraits. The templates also come with extra little pieces so that you can add your own waves and curls to the hairstyles that come included. I'm now using the stamps that also come from Paper Babe, which will add your um, facial features. So you literally just choose the eyes. You've got different varieties of eyes on there and you can put in the iris however you like. So I'm just inking this up with some archival ink in watering can. Excuse the head. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a um, paper paper mask so that I can cut out the inside of the eye and then I can when I stamp the iris I won't get um, any ink anywhere else. So at this point, I'm just deciding which of the pupil sizes to go for. Um, I like the way that you can customize the different elements to create um, very unique profiles. And I do apologize for the top of my head. If I'd have known, I would have probably used a hairbrush that day. That stamp there is for the nostril which is very well thought out. Again, wouldn't have thought of including that, but obviously um, we've, we've got that on our stamp set. And I'm now going in with some red archival ink to stamp the outline for the lips. And the original guidelines that were drawn for the eye are just being rubbed out. So I'm going to go in with and colour my portrait today with the Spectra Noir Colour Blend pencils and I will include a list of all the colours that I've used either in the description or over at my blog entry. And the secret to colouring with any colouring pencil is to start off with a really light layer and build up your colour in stages. Um, I like to start with the darkest shade so this is going to be my shadow colour and really get some definition into the facial features, really give us some contouring, um, which I don't know how to do in real life on my own face, but uh, for some reason I, I, I seem to be able to pull it off a bit when I'm coloring. So I'm going in with my second color here. So that's my second deeper shade. Again, very, very light. In with the third. So getting gradually lighter each time. 
trying to think about where the light source may be coming from and which part of the facial features might be getting hit by the light and making sure that's the lightest part. And then going in with an even lighter color. And I think that was a little bit of pink in that one as well. So I'm going in for round two now. So this is just exactly the same, but just layering the colors up and really getting those colors to blend. Here's where I'm coming in with just a very pale shade of pink just to give her a bit of um, bit of color onto her cheeks. And now I'm back to round three of the coloring, um, starting with my darkest shade again. And just each time I'm going in with a slightly heavier hand to lay down more color and to um, burnish the color onto the page once I'm happy with the blending. So because the paper I'm using in my journal hasn't been designed for um, colouring pencils, it was a little bit obvious that you could see the pencil marks. Um, so I've gone in with the blending solution from Spectrum Noir and the paper stamps. And although you probably can't see it on the footage, in real life you could really tell a difference once the uh, pencil marks had all been evened out and the blending became very, very seamless. In fact, it's very difficult to tell now that it was done with colouring pencils if, you, if you're not used to using them. You can probably see that I'm not actually taking the blending solution straight from the bottle. I've actually decanted a tiny little bit onto a piece of cut and dry foam. That way the paper stamp doesn't become too wet and break apart.
Okay, I've coloured her eye now using three colours of the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pens in the blues to give her a beautifully sparkly eye. And I'm going to go over her lips now with a light pink, I think that was Rose Quartz Sparkle Pen. And that's just for a base coat for her lips, just to give it a really beautiful sparkle when I later go over the top with some more pencils. So that's coloured in and I'm just going to dry that off and then I can go over the top with some pencils. Moving on to the hair now, and I'm laying down a base coat of colour with my Spectrum Aqua Pen. And my boss for this paint, this picture was actually my daughter, and she instructed me to do blonde hair going into pink tips. She also said that she wanted me to use the pencils to give it some definition and see that the hair uh, to see the hair clearly. Um, but I'm going in with my Aqua Pens to get a nice colour down for the background of the hair so nice and light and because these are water-based pens um, they work really nicely using them as a watercolor I'm now going over the top of just the tips with my pink pen and by going on top of the colour that I used for the blonde will give it a more natural dyed colour rather than just going from one colour to the next because I've layered it up it still will take on some of the some of the hue of the blonde colour underneath. So just like we did with the skin, I'm going in with my darker colour first and I'm using a nice sharpened pencil and just doing a nice flicking technique, adding a bit of shadow around um, for the cast shadows, so adding a bit of shading there and then drawing in some lines to be the individual hairs to define those. Thank you. 
So as usual, I've used about at least three colours for the blonde. Um, and now I'm going in from the bottom with some pink pencils. So I have put some blonde hairs at the bottom as well. And I'm just going over the top with some pink to give it a bit more of a natural um, sort of subtle ombre effect rather than suddenly she's got pink hair at the bottom. And again, I'm going in with a darker pink and then I'll go in with a lighter one. And then I will transition it from the pink into the blonde using one of the lighter colours that I used for the top of the hair. And this process does take a while, but because we've got that base colour down from the Spectrum Aqua, um, you can get a nice, uh, a nice finish to the picture quite easily. And that little hand that you can see there, that is my boss coming to check in and see how I'm doing. And she was uh, she was happy with the overall results. So I think um, I think I've still got a job. I think I've still got a job this week. So I'm planning on paper piecing the small area that you can see there to be her top. So I'm just tracing the image that I've already got um, ready to cut out on some paper later. Now I've got all of my foreground image, I'm going to work on the background. So to do that, I'm masking out everything that I've done so far using the Pebio drawing gum, which is my favorite way of masking out images. I don't normally use this on top of completed images, but um, I, I did it and it uh, didn't hurt my image at all. For the background, I've stuck on some Tim Holtz tissue tape just in a few areas there. And I'm covering the lot with just a, a layer of gesso from uh, Pebio. And because I have got the uh, drawing gum on my image, it doesn't matter if I go over because the image is protected. And you'll see that when I rub it all off later. So the background is going to be fairly vibrant. I'm using the Pebio Deco uh, paints and one of those is a pearl colour. So I'm lightening them with a little bit of gesso as well and then just going a little bit random um, to cover the background. These paints are so, um, so good and so highly pigmented that I actually had to water them down quite a lot with some water um, to get that background tissue to, to show through. And I'm, because I've, again, because the image is protected, I can just go straight over that hair so that I don't miss any bits in the background. And I'm just going to streak in the different colours that I've picked up.
So these background stamps that I'm using here are from um, Craftwork Cards. So I'm just stamping over some areas just to give a little bit more um, texture to the background using some archival ink, which goes over these Peblio paints and any acrylic paint very nicely. These stamps, I'm not sure if they still make them anymore, but from time to time they do bring out some nice, easy to use background stamps. Um, but any, any background stamps would work. Now for the big reveal to rub off the drawing gum and reveal the picture all nice and clean underneath. And this is the moment where you panic and wonder whether you've missed any parts. Um, but it's very, very therapeutic, shall we say. I've picked out some pink striped paper that I had lying around in my stash and I'm just cutting out the template that we traced earlier for her top. I'm going to be sticking that down in a moment with the gel medium but before I do that I'm just going to ink it a little bit with some distress ink to give it a little bit more form and dimension. And although I think I pick up the pumice stone distress ink, the ink tool that I used had quite a bit of brown left on it. So I end up with a random colour by a happy accident, which worked quite nicely anyway. And that's my famous ink tool, which is actually a carver um, cork with an inking tool foam stuck to the bottom of it. My daughter chose the quote for this page today and I'm trying to do a bit of brush lettering for the main word in it. So I've drew, uh, drawn down some guidelines so that I can at least draw in a straight line. Um, but unfortunately the word it was so long that the stamps which Spectrum Noir bought out for the Spectrum Noir brush pens would have meant that the word didn't fit across the page. So I'm trying to freestyle it. I've roughly marked out where each letter's going to go. Um, but I've gauged it a little bit wrong, as you'll see. But, you know, I'm, you know, I don't pretend to be a brush lettering expert and I just go with the flow and it's a little bit wobbly at the end and it doesn't bother me at all because the sentiment is still there. There we go, squeezing it in on the end.
I finished the sentiment with the Spectrum Noir Art Liner Fine Pens. And again, these pens, they worked really nice on top of the acrylic background. Again, not too worried about whether I've got the best handwriting in the world because it's, you know, when you're working on your own art journal, it's nice to have your handwriting in it, good or bad. And I'm just thickening up the side of the letters just to give them a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a shape. Now, this is one of the new metallic brush pens that Spectrum Noir have just brought out. And I'm just highlighting the thick edges on the brush lettered words and coloring in the gaps on the small letters. And it just gives it a really nice um, shine to it. So these pens are really great for things like this as well. And this is almost finished. I'm going to put a gilding flake edge around the entire piece. So I'm just using a bit of cut and dry foam and the Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue to go all the way around the edge. And what I like about this glue is it doesn't dry. So it once you've put it down, you, you leave it for a few seconds or maybe a minute and it will go tacky and it will stay tacky. So you can take as much time as you want to edge the whole thing at once. And then I'll go along and I will put on the gilding flakes afterwards. Um, I don't have the packaging anymore for the gilding flakes. It's a, it's some that I bought a very long time ago and I've got no idea who it's by, but obviously this technique will work with any gilding flakes that you may have. So the final detail to add now is I just wanted to give her a little bit more um, black eyeliner and, and black eyelashes. So I went back to the art liner pens, which um, come in different sizes. So one of them is a super fine nib and that is perfect for that. Then I'm just taking a white Posca pen just to put a little bit of um, nice shine onto the eye and a little bit of pencil just to put a bit of shading where the eyelid overlaps the eye little bit more white pen on the lips to give them a shine as well and this is the finished result. I've uploaded two versions of this video. This version has the voiceover but there's also another version with no voiceover but just background music which is the same format as all of my other previous art journal pages. Please let me know in the comments below whether you prefer with the voiceover or whether you prefer with just background music because I'm hoping that I can do some more art journaling pages again and it would be really helpful to know which you guys prefer. Do you prefer it with the voiceovers or do you prefer it without? Also, is there any information that I left out? Please put a comment below and I can answer your questions. And finally, just to say thank you to my daughter who was the inspiration for this page. Uh, she seems happy with it, so I'm happy with it. There's a link to my blog in the description below which will list all the products used and hope to see you on one of my videos soon. Thank you for watching.